Welcome, fellow traveler, to another episode of The Ruthless Awakening, a podcast that deals with personal development, self-discovery, breathwork, meditation, you name it. We're going to talk about all of those things on this podcast, which is aimed to help us on our journey through consciousness. Before I start, I would just like to thank each and every one of you that voted and that helped me solidify the name The Ruthless Awakening, which I believe is a badass name for the type of podcast that uh, we're, we're building here together. And I would like to foster this type of relationship where we are having a give and take and where you guys can help me shape the episodes and talk about things that really matter to you and that could actually provide some additional benefit apart from the breath work and meditation stuff that i do i think it's very important to be discussing these deeper elements of life itself and on that note let's just segue straight into the episode which is called the waking life and there was a request from the discord group which specifically asked about what does the waking life mean in relation to spirituality and what it means to wake up in terms of a spiritual or a magical perspective i think that's a definitely important question and i think we can explore that together in this specific episode so first of all the waking life what what does it mean to be awake well let's begin with the fact that the vast majority of this world happens on autopilot the vast majority of things in your own life happens automatically most of our lives are automated in fact if you were to become aware of the minuscule amount of processing power that you have consciously, you might just freak out. According to some estimates, the threshold of, of processing power that you have consciously sits roughly at about 50 to 60 bits of uh, information per second. Compared to the unconscious mind that boasts between 10 to 11 million bits of unconscious processing power per second. Now, the vast majority of this processing power is there to help run, you know, the respiratory system, the immune system, everything that you don't think about that keeps you alive. That's what the unconscious mind is doing consistently. However, you know, it's not all of it. There's, there's, so much more about the unconscious mind and this processing power that we can actually tap into however it is important to note that we're only consciously processing between 50 to 60 bits of information per second and that 50 to 60 bits is your entire life that's all of your decisions that's where you decide to focus your attention that's everything that you do on purpose is happening within this small window of 50 to 60 bits of conscious processing power so what does it mean to be awake or what does the waking life mean it it's sort of becoming aware of this fact it's 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 shifting away from this automated existence and taking manual control of your own life now within the spiritual aspect it's becoming aware that you are a spiritual being living a mundane reality and within a personal development context it's about becoming aware of these unconscious processes that most people are not aware of and the fact of the matter is that most of your programs or these algorithms these internal algorithms that that are just executed on autopilot a large amount of those are not even yours you didn't write them they were given to you as you were growing up when you were a small child everything was taught to you and that includes the way you respond to situations that includes the way that you feel as, as as your baseline emotional state in fact your eating habits your religious views your spiritual views on life all of these are programs that are handed to you they're gifted to you from the, the previous generation and the vast majority of the people that are asleep which would you know be the opposite of being awake they're just allowing these programs to execute on autopilot they're not even aware that these programs exist 
And being awakened is about being aware. It's about being conscious in the present moment and being able to recognize when one of these scripts or these automated programs are being executed in your life. So for example, maybe somebody's cutting you off in traffic or you know, you have you're forced to wait when you're typically uh, allowed to just go ahead and do whatever activity it is that you're thinking that you should be doing at that moment. And then without thinking it, you're reacting either in anger or uh, disappointment or depression or any of these type of scripts that are playing out. And so being awakened or, you know, living your waking life is about being aware of this. It's about catching yourself when these automated scripts are playing out. And that happens when you shift your awareness away from the past or the present or entertaining the ideas even that are floating around in your head and shifting it into this current moment of now. It's about being conscious and present in this moment, your place of power. This is where you can harness your true potential. The question is, how does one become awakened? You know, how does one go online? How does one become aware of, you know, their life and the impact of their life on this reality and on and, and the responsibility that they have for just being alive? The vast majority of the people become aware through some kind of traumatic experience. In fact, that's where the ruthless awakening really shines because that's how we go online. We, most people, most people that I know, at least from my personal experience, have gone through hell. And when they go through hell in one way or another, they become aware because it suffers and it, and it kills and it forces them to become faced with these internal programs. And usually you f- run into this conflictive area of life when these old programs no longer serve you and they no longer are valid. And so they come crashing into the ever shifting reality that's happening around you. And suddenly you're like, oh shit, well, this is not working anymore. So what do I do? What, how do I change myself or how do I adapt so that I can now continue to move forward? See, all of the programs that were given to you as a kid will only work for you up until a certain point in your life. And then life will require you to become something else, someone else, someone greater than that you are at this moment. And it will only challenge you when your old solutions stop to work. And that's a painful process because You've lived your entire life according to this script and now suddenly it's no longer valid. It's no longer going to get you to where you want to get to. And so therefore, most people come online due to some traumatic event or some painful event that makes them painfully aware of their current situation and their inability to be able to overcome it. A sort of a ruthless awakening, if you will. And when this happens, you're forced to come and look at what is happening right here and right now in this moment of your life. And when you come to this realization, what happens is that you start observing your own life. For the first time, you're no longer simply executing these these algorithms. You're now stopping and looking at what's happening. You know, oh man, why is this not working? What are the thoughts that are keeping me behind? What are the, what are the actions that aren't allowing me to grow? And uh, this series of questions and self-reflection is what makes you go online. It's what wakes you up from this slumber that you have, this automated state of existence. Once that happens, you can start making the changes to be able to achieve the things in your life that you want to achieve. It's not a permanent state, you could shift back into your automated processes if you don't continually work on this waking life, if you don't continually stay present in the eternal present. So the question is, how do you stay present? And one 
perhaps not the only key, but one of the most powerful and easiest ways to keep your, your awareness grounded in the present is by observing the breath. And the reason for this is because the breath is both an automated process, but it can also be manually manipulated, where we can shift the frequency and intensity of the breath, which then directly affects our nervous system and shifts our, our mental states from one to the other. I personally love that aspect of breath work. And every day, a couple of times throughout the day, I come in and I check in with the breath. Because when you become acutely aware of how your breath behaves, you can start seeing what are the type of algorithmic programs that are running in your mind in that current state. So if you're breathing shallow, potentially up in the chest, that might suggest that you're stressed or anxious about something. And then from there, you can check in on the mind and say, well, what's the mind thinking about? And potentially it's about the bills or it's about a relationship or anything that's really just keeping you out of the present moment of here and now and rather entertained into this projected reality inside of your mind. Then if you do discover that your mind is potentially in the future or in the past, then you can bring it back to the present and you just simply observe the breath. You just take a few and then you exhale and you just feel it. Maybe take a couple of grounding breaths to just bring your awareness to your body, to the here, to the now. And then from there on out, you can decide whether you want to invest your time into these thoughts or emotions that are currently plaguing you. That for me has been key and instrumental to being in the here and now, irrespective of what's happening around me in my life. And I think we'll leave it at that. If you are currently under stress, or if you currently are feeling that life's a little bit crazy, I highly recommend you check out any of my videos on, on my YouTube channel because they are designed to help you stay in the present and they're designed to, I make them as tools for consciousness. I, each and every one of them is designed for a specific purpose and therefore they're tools that I freely give out to everybody who is on this journey of consciousness um, because, you know, it's easy to get lost in the automation. And with that, I think we'll leave it. Otherwise, I'm going to be rambling on and on about all of these things. But thank you for listening, if you're still listening up to this point. And if you do have any topics that you would like to add, feel free to comment wherever you're listening to this. Don't get involved with the bullshit around you. Don't allow the automation to take over. Check in with the breath stay present, stay aware of what's happening inside and outside of you. And then with this awareness, make the decisions that accelerate your life towards where you want to go. And with that, I bid you all a good journey through the rest of this week, fellow travelers. See you next week. Have a good one.